The skeleton of the corset is ready. Now I need to overlay the seam allowance with fabric encased rigoline bones, which will serve as tunnels for plastic bones. First of all, I need to determine the required length of the rigoline bones to encase it in fabric and sew it in place. The length of the bone should not exceed the length of the fabric strap, 150 centimeters. In order to ensure it, I measure the lengths of the princess seams one after another, starting from the center and moving toward the back. Now I know that I need 1.3 meters of wide wriggling boning for adding tunnels along the four princess seams. I cut two bones for the two halves of the corset, each 1.3 meters long. And I will also need a wide fabric encased wriggling bone for finishing the lacing bars, about 0.6 meters. At this point, I can calculate precisely how much wriggling boning is required for sewing our corset. Counting the bones I have already sewn onto the lacing bars, it takes about 4.5 to 5 meters of wide wriggling boning and another 2 to 2.5 meters of narrow wriggling boning to finish the top and the bottom of the corset. I prepare fabric straps for encasing the bones. The calculations have shown that I need to prepare two straps with a length of 150 centimeters and one shorter strap with a length of 60 centimeters. A width of 2.7 centimeters will be enough for encasing the bones. I will simultaneously prepare three to 3.5 centimeter wide fabric straps for finishing the top and the bottom edges of the corset. In other words, I tear off four straps of stretch satin at its whole width, two 2.7 centimeter wide straps, and two 3.5 centimeter wide straps. Each of them is 150 centimeters long. You need to press them flat, too. I start encasing the wide wriggling bones in the fabric. I take a fabric strap that is 2.7 centimeters wide, lay a bone in the middle of it, and wrap one edge of the strap around it. And then I stitch along the edge of the bone, catching the two layers of fabric and the bone between them simultaneously. It is a lot easier to sew when you're pulling on the fabric strap. I wrap the other edge of the strap over the bone. Pull the fabric case 0.5 to 1 centimeter up at the top. Place the bone under the needle of the sewing machine and start sewing.
I have encased the bone in fabric. Next, I simply do the same with the second bone and the third shorter bone. I sew these fabric encased wriggling bones onto the seam allowances. I finish the lacing bars. I take the short encased bone, put it next to the bone sewn onto the lacing bar, and sew it on by stitching right over the stitches on the casing. By sewing these bones onto the lacing bars, I will fully disguise their raw edges. The second lacing bar. Now both lacing bars are finished. I sew the rest of the bones onto the princess seam at the back and onto the side seams. I take a long encased bone, trim the manufactured end, and place the bone with its edge right next to the joining seam, thereby fully overlaying the seam allowance. I stitch right over the stitches that attach the fabric casing to the bone. Here is what it looks like from the face and from the inside with a bone sewn onto the princess seam at the back. Next, I sew a bone onto the side seam. and I overlay the princess seam of the back and the side seam on the other half of the corset just the same way. Now, I only need to overlay the intermediate and central princess seams at the front of the corset. I have decided to add a decorative touch to these bones with the help of some lace. I take the same lace I used for finishing the lacing bars, only this time I don't cut it up lengthwise. I place a bone in the middle of the lace ribbon 
and sew it on. One row of stitches is enough. You can use any kind of ribbons, contrasting lace, or trimmings for the same purpose. I put the bone decorated with lace over the seam allowance of the intermediate princess seam at the front of the corset and secure it with two rows of parallel stitches. And then I overlay the seam allowance of the central princess seam of the front in the same manner. I overlay the front princess seams on the other half of the corset just the same way. I have decorated the corset right during the sewing process and the result is quite elegant. Let's finish the top edge of the corset. I lay a narrow wriggling bone about two to three millimeters below the top edge of the corset from the face side and sew it on. The ends of the bones are all taped with pieces of masking tape. I stitch along the inner side of the bone. and I make another row of strengthening stitches through the bone. I even out the top edge. And then I sew the prepared 3.5 centimeter wide strap along the top edge of the corset from the inside. I place this strap face down at the top edge of the corset. Next, I fold the strap over the edge and sew it on from the face side.
the top edge of the other half of the corset is finished just the same way. Now I need to finish the curved area of the neckline. There are various tricks you can use for finishing such curved areas. For example, you can do it with the help of a narrow rigoline bone by shaping it accordingly. Bones sewn at the top and bottom of the corset are responsible for the stiff skeleton construction of the corset and for making its edges smooth and even various ways of finishing corset necklines, both their straight and curved areas, are explained in detail in my see-through corsets course. Let me show you a simple method of finishing curved areas of a corset neckline without a trimming. I will use bone casing as the trimming. It is the kind you usually sew onto round cups for inserting underwires. This bone casing settles very well in curved areas and is not any worse than narrow wriggling boning when it comes to reinforcing edges. I sew it on along the curved area of the neckline. and then I wrap it in the same kind of a 3.5 centimeter wide fabric strap.
The neckline of the corset is finished. Now, before I can hem the corset, I need to insert hard plastic or metal spiral bones into the tunnels. I start by inserting plastic bones into the tunnels on the lacing bars and then gradually move to the center of the corset. I recommend you insert symmetric bones on both halves of the corset instead of doing it first on one half and then on the other. I measure the required length of the bone. It is supposed to be about 1.5 centimeters shorter than the tunnel. I make the cutoff end of the bone round. I prepare a total of four bones of the same length and push them inside the tunnels on the two lacing bars. I help myself with a screwdriver where needed. Then I measure and cut two bones for the princess seams at the back and insert them in the tunnels. I insert the prepared bones into the tunnels of the side seams. I insert bones into the intermediate princess seams of the front. and I insert bones into the central princess seams of the front. I have made horizontal bar tacks about seven centimeters below the top edge of the wriggling bones, which overlay the central princess seams. This won't let the plastic bones in the tunnels of the central princess seams reach to the very top edge and flatten the cups. The wriggling bones reaching to the middle of the cups won't make them flat, but hard plastic bones would have created unnecessary tension. It's why the plastic bones of the central princess seams only reach the under bust line level. I have inserted all plastic bones into the corset. The same kind of a corset sewn without plastic bones will be more of a decorative than a functional garment. Wriggling bones overlaying the joining seams will start to break, unable to handle the pressure. It is, however, still a good way to practice to sew your very first corset if you happen to have no plastic bones at hand at the moment. In addition, I would like to give you a piece of advice. Don't wait until you collect a full set of working tools before you start learning to sew. Make progress gradually. If you have an iron and a sewing machine, you can safely start sewing. Besides, you don't need large quantities of expensive materials for making corsets. You can always practice with cotton fabrics or any leftover patches of fabric which any DIY enthusiast has in stock. The corset is composed of relatively small pieces which can be cut from separate small bits of fabric. Needless to say that the look of your corset 
transforms entirely after you insert plastic bones into the tunnels. Its princess seams acquire their proper shape and the corset itself necessary stiffness. The bottom edge of the corset is finished in the same fashion as the top edge. I sew a narrow wriggling bone along the bottom edge of the corset from the face side and then wrap it in a fabric strap for a pencil edge look. Make sure to compare the lengths of the two halves of the corset back before finishing the bottom edge. I trim away any messy bits sticking from behind the bone at the bottom of the corset. Do not hesitate to put the corset on the dress form and adjust the placement of the bottom bone if the hem doesn't seem to look very even and neat. I wrap the bottom bone with a 3.5 cm wide fabric strap, just like I did with the bone at the top of the corset. I keep pulling the strap on quite tight as I stitch. It's a lovely corset, decorated with lace and with neatly finished edges at the top and down the bottom. Even though the cups are still missing, you can already wear it with a romantic poet blouse, for example. 
It's time to work on the cups though. In order to prepare the cups for getting sewn into the corset, you need to add tunnels for matching metal underwires along their bottom edges. If you want to encase your cups in fabric and decorate them, you should do so before adding the tunnels. Since I'm only working on a training sample, I will use my cuffs as they are. I attach bone casing to the bottom edge of the cup with two rows of parallel stitches. The tunnel is in place. The cup is ready to be sewn into the corset. I only need to insert an underwire. When you're inserting an underwire into the tunnel, make sure to direct its more curved end toward the center of the corset and its less curved end toward the side. The underwire makes the cup stiffer, more robust, and more pronounced in shape. Now I need to make bar tacks in the form of close zigzag stitches on the tunnel to prevent the bone from jumping out. Before sewing the cups in place, you should put the corset on the dress form and make sure it repeats your client's body shapes and its corners at the top are placed at the same level. After doing so, I push the cups underneath the corset, put them in place, and secure them with pins. Make sure the cups are placed symmetrically and meet exactly in the center of the corset. You can take the corset off the dress form and secure the cups in place with hand stitches. As for me, I prefer to use Gooderman fabric glue. I lift the top edge of the corset, smear it with glue, and stick it back in place. I move on to decoration. The corset is so delicate. I think all it needs is another decorative lace ribbon at the top. You can sew it on by hand, but I use the same Gooderman fabric glue instead. In the end, I have decided to overlay the cups with lace too. The corset is finished! 
Of course, it is a very basic corset, and yet it is fully functional and robust. All I need to do now is install grommets into the lacing bars. This is what the corset looks like from all sides. It looks even better on the client, of course. Here's a tip. If you want to take pictures for the sake of advertising, put the garment on the client and not on the dress form.